favorite composers is the Italian madrigalist Gesualdo, who set up his wife and her lover. Oh, I'm going to go away for a couple of weeks, and came back with a posse of his friends and brutalized them. It took a couple of days for him to kill them. Really? And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so just like, okay, you're dead. It's like, oh, I'm going to torture you a little bit and then kill you eventually. It was a little bit above and beyond the call of sort of normal retribution. And they were like, that's a little too much, Jez. So they confined him to his house for the rest of his long and bizarre life, where he composed these exquisitely beautiful chromatic madrigals. And he's one of my favorites, because you think... Yeah, mine too. You think, hmm, this is a guy who ripped his um, rival's entrails out and played with them for a couple of days. Well done. And, and I'm not convinced that other people have that intense... That I'm not advocating, of course, murder or anything like that, but it's, it's nice when you know people are capable of actual depth of emotion and thought and behavior. I have a um, friend, a Bengali friend, and he says the word is patimastan, which is a person who holds up a knife and says he's going to use it and makes all idle threats. Right. This is beyond patimastan. Yeah, he meant it. It's unfortunate for his wife and her lover, who ended up six feet under, I guess, but we got some great music out of it. So Certainly uh, did. Unlike the horrible mans and songs, which are bad. He was a bad songwriter. So let's talk about Babies Insane. I love that. That's one you wrote, and it's so delightful. The first time I heard it was last year when you uh-huh. when you did the Valentine show, and it was just I was giggling up in the balcony. It's a very funny song. It's, it's a, a true story, song. and I was living like that, and I had this affair <laughs> with this guy, and he was he got me angry one night, and very very angry, and there was a little blood here and there, and in the next morning he was gone. But so were all my implements. I mean, that is to say, my <laughs> knife, my scissors, uh-huh. my spore. And he had hid them under the mattress. And so it that was... seems like a bad place to hide them. Oh. He hid everything under the mattress. And it was really funny. It was my first year in New York. And mm-hmm. I was just being clever, protecting myself. It was very funny because the song tells, basically basically says, probably time to get on the bus. The baby's <laughs> insane. And it talks about the mood swings of oh. the woman you're in love with and, and all this. And, but it was a true story. And I was living like that. The place was a filthy mess. And it was real trashy living. And... I laugh on the record because critics just uniformly hated that song. and <sighs> Not me, and they're wrong. They're <laughs> just wrong. And they just said, I, I do not understand how a person with such a voice would sing a song like this. And I said, well, now, she would only sing a song like this if she wrote a song like this. She would only write a song like this if she lived a song like this. So, in fact, you're giving me a critical review on my life. Continuing on with this morbid obsession that we seem to have with funny killing and things like that. This isn't very funny, actually. It's the song Oh Death. Well, Ralph Stanley wrote the song, but I think of it as a lonesome song. And he sings the song. The lonesome song was the idea of a cowboy standing right there in the desert, looking up at the sky. Testifying. Testifying. That's right. And in that sense, it's like a blues. And in that sense, it's like the Rebetica, the Greek songs. It's just just a lonesome song. And so the way I sing it actually has the elements of Rebetica singing in it because Mm -hmm. I sing O Death, and then I repeat O Death over and over again like a chant. And then I get into the song. Then it calls in straight country. I was reading that book that was written by the the Louisiana forensic scientist who, who started the body farm in Louisiana. Oh, right. Yeah, so I was reading that book at the same time, staying at my friend Bradley Pickelsheimer's house, and we were reading, kind of reading that book, and the guy is talking about the decomposition rate of bodies in different temperatures, and he's discussing it in a very cold scientific way while having a very compassionate nature. He's really doing this research and discussing the rate of maggot multiplication and so forth in the heat, as opposed to colder weather because he, oh, he saw like some horrible, horrible deaths and he was very angry about them and so he, he's really trying to advance forensic work and he has done it's, it. It's not just a morbid obsession of his. It's no, a, no, it's no. A, it's, it's a progressive it's way to... Serious to science. Yeah, totally. But I was reading that book and working on the song at the same time so the guy <laughs> says... You're trying to make a uh, deal with me. Death is saying this, but you know what? You can't make a deal with me because when your time has come, your time is come. And in fact, I am hungry for your flesh. And so there's no deal. There's no deal. No money, no cars, no prayers, no God, no nothing will going to get you by. When I'm ready for you, I'm taking you. And the person is begging, and Death is just saying, 
talking about maggots and words. And so here I am <laughs> reading this book about the body farm and singing this song, and it made perfect coherency. You know, well, so that's the kind of interpolation that I think works yes. well when you've got additional stuff to bring to it. Not always. Just, oh, I'm going to flutter around like a coloratura on this on this oh, song well. and muck it up, and I don't I'm going to lose focus of... on that. And I'm not saying that you do. Nina but... Simone used to do that on the piano. She used to waste a lot of time at the piano. Oh. She used to sing real well, and then she played these ridiculous Bach partitas. Not even show off. Just but stupid. She would she would play this Bach crap in the middle of a blues, and I would say, "What the hell are you doing? What's the matter with you?" I really think that the whole race politics played into that because they were like forcing her to say, "Well, I could have been a classical right. pianist if I had wanted to, and I'm going to prove it to you." So, I mean, ultimately, again, wow, it would come back game, to, well, you know, it's one of those things. Nonetheless, whether what whatever her motivations were, it's still wrong. It sucks. It stinks. Boring. It's crap. And so, when people talk to me about Nina Simone, I say, "Please, please do not talk to me, who's a serious, serious pianist." about Nina Simone's piano playing. Please, don't hurt my feelings, because she was very, very terrible piano player. Terrible. Again, getting back to chord progressions, getting back to the intention of the song, and getting back to vocal technique. Vocal technique only serves you in the telling of the story, and anybody who forgets that is wasting the composer's time. That's it. Well, Miss Galas, tell us about your show at the Knitting Factory for all the lovers and dreamers we call our friends. <laughs> call my friends, friends other names but no 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 I think that it will include all of these songs and by this I mean the most vulnerable of these songs and the most vulnerable part of these songs like The Thrill Is Gone which represents the end of a love affair and Chet Baker sings it so beautifully and he's talking about the f saying well you know the things that I used to do you love you no longer love you're tired you're bored with all these things you used to call enchantments and now oh, I love that one it's so beautiful, and I was not able to play it for a long time in rehearsal. I used to cry all Break the time. Break down. Yeah, I actually <laughs> d did like Judy Garland. I would never allow the audience to see that side of me, however, right. unlike Judy. But <laughs> she's a great fucking singer. But the thing is, um, I expect the audience to be quiet enough to listen to a part of the love song which shows a vulnerability and the sweetness and a person whose veins are open to something new and exciting as well as the person who's decided to exact revenge and can be seen as a person who is a kakokula, which is a woman who wants only to exact evil and extract evil from having wasted time with a traitor. Fun for the whole family at the Knitting Factory on February 14th. I know I'll be there in pink satin incarnations. See you soon. Thank you, Diamanda, for coming. <laughs> Pleasure.